Welcome to the hobby. Let's rejoin the discussion on painting the Red Devils. So we are going to see some of the colors on here that have been mixed with other colors, but for the most part these are all just right out of the bottle, um, what they look like on a miniature. We're going to start here with step one. Now we've assumed that you've already cleaned and primed your miniature. So step one is we're going to put the base coats on. Now um, for the most part I paint uh, from dark to light. Uh, so basically we're going to start off with all the dark colors, which is going to be where all the shadows are going to be on this miniature. Um, and then we're going to go f lighter up from there. So the step one here, um, we're going to paint this guy's beret a really dark red. Um, we're going to paint uh, his, um, his pants a really dark brown. We're going to paint his smock, you know, this, uh, this uh, dark greenish brown, you know, color here. Same thing with his webbing. Uh, and same thing with his flesh. We're going to pick our darkest shade of flesh. Um, basically, dark flesh. Dark flesh. There you go. There you go. We're going to move on to step two. Okay. Now, step two, uh, we're basically what we're going to do is, is we're going to take a lighter shade. Uh, for, as an example, let's go to the pants. Um, as you saw in step one, I had a dark color of brown on his pants. Well, I want his pants to be lighter. So the mid-tone, basically the overall gist of the pants, I want to be this color. And aptly enough, it's English uniform. That, they make that pretty easy for you. So basically what we're going to do is, is we're going to take our brush and we're going to basically just put paint on all the raised areas that we see here. All the recessed areas we're going to leave dark. Um, now, some people will do this very quickly um, in a method called dry brushing, and then some people will kind of paint these shapes on to follow the contours. If you have more time or a steady hand, you can basically follow the folds with this lighter color paint as you put it on. And as you can see on the uh, khaki strap, I've added a little bit of white uh, to the khaki. Now when you're mixing uh, lighter colors, especially white, um, with uh, your base color, basically what you want to decide is, is how many highlights um, am I going to put on this object. Now on this particular strap, I'm not going to do more than three shades of color because it's a strap. Who needs to have that many shades uh, on a strap? So our uh, base color is khaki. Then I'm going to add uh, a three to one ratio of white to to khaki. So I'm going to put down uh, three parts khaki and one part white. Now there are different methods you can use to put down these different parts. You can use eyedroppers. You can actually use the Vallejo paint bottles act as eyedroppers. So you can put down three little dots of khaki and one dot of white and then mix them together on a palette. Um, or you can do what I normally do, which is I. I I relate everything to brush loads of paint. Basically, a brush load of paint is how much paint can you fit on your brush. Um, so I will dip my brush into the khaki three times and put that paint down on the palette, and then after rinsing it off, put my brush into the uh, white once, and then use that to mix it up. Hmm. Um, and I, I basically do that because I didn't always paint with Vallejo paints. Uh, a lot of the times I painted with Games Workshop paints or Poly paints, and open it, pots. And they're open pots, so right. you don't have the nifty little eyedropper feature there. You know, it's funny. I use that same technique for mixing color, only I call it uh, eyeballing it. Eyeballing it, yeah. That's, that's but, uh, you know, uh, brush loading, is that, that's a good word, too. Step three is just basically more of the same. We have now gotten to the lightest color that I'm going to paint on most of these these uh, objects, like his smock and his pants. I'm not going to do more than three shades of color. Uh, at 15 millimeter, I think uh, the more shades you put on, the harder it is to tell that you've done any shading. So I think three is a nice round magic number there. Um, and basically, I'm painting on this wood grain. I started off with the darker parts of the wood grain, um, and then I'm coming back on it with uh, this highlight um, on on top of the on top of that. So basically, you got three different colors just to kind of show a little texture. Uh, with the uh, smock, I did the second color in green ochre. Here, though, I'm mixing in ivory. Um, with it to to get the highlight. Now the reason why I chose ivory over white is because it lightens up the color but it doesn't get that glow that white will give you sometimes, especially if you put too much white um, mm. in there. So basically I'm just using it as a, as a dull um, color to get That's more of a yellowy base as opposed to that bright uh, white base. Right, I'm sure yeah. your wife has asked you to paint a bathroom or two in this color as opposed to white. So, I mean, it's just a, it's a more soothing, soothing color. Um, now, we're going to move on to step four. 
And step four, basically what I'm doing now is, is I'm putting the first color of camouflage over top of the smock now that it's done. Now, this is really where you want to go to reference when you're trying to match camo patterns. The great thing about the British camo pattern, um, it was a Denison smock, um, was that it used a very brush-like looking pattern. It, unlike the SS pattern where it looks like, um, they call it like a P-dot pattern, where it looks like little flecks of color or little round shapes of color or unlike a modern you know digital camouflage or even the US Woodlands camouflage that look like some kind of amoebic shapes this actually this pattern actually looked like brush strokes it looked like someone took a big old house paint brush and then just brushed the color onto the smocks the first color being flat brown and then our final stage is going is in step five is going to be putting on the green um, once again it's a brush like pattern so we're going to take uh, 890 reflective green and we're going to put that um, over top of our brown and our, and our um, green ochre smock. Now the thing about painting um, three color camouflage to keep in mind is, is you don't want one color to just be the overall dominant. You don't want the dark green or the dark brown to take up too much of the camo pattern. If anything's going to take up too much it should be your base color. So what I, I like to try and get in there is I like to try and get a one third, one third, one third you know basic kind of mix and the nice thing about painting it like this is is if you find that you've put too much brown on the on the smock to begin with you can always go on top of that brown in areas with green to kind of cut back some of that brown so now you don't have as much brown showing you have the equal proportions of, of green brown and, and then the base color and that basically is a good uh, rule of thumb to follow with any kind of camo pattern you do you don't really want any one color to be the predominant predominant color. You don't want anything to look like it was the base coat. Right, right. Yeah. And and um, basically, talking about some of the, the equipment on some of the other miniatures and the helmets, uh, basically with the helmets, um, I just used a dark, uh, a dark green for the helmet as a base. Um, now you can go in there and highlight up the, the camo denig if you want. It's a little bit difficult with everything else that's going on, um, but basically a dark green and then if you want to highlight up the, the camo netting. Uh, and then there are... Um, these burlap straps that they had on their helmets um, for camouflage and that can be two or three color you can paint a, a third of them green a third of them the same base color that you did your smock in and then a third of them brown and that'll get you where you want to go just kind of keep cycling the same colors through absolutely yeah. and and with the equipment basically you want to find you know a dark color um, you know the uh, like the the piots and the light mortars and the um, ammunition bearers um, basically uh, you know you just kind of want to start off with a dark dark green that you think the equipment should look like I used 890 reflective green and then basically highlighted it up with Russian uniform and then a mix of Russian uniform and ivory uh, and then the Bren gun is also worth noting. Uh, for some strange reason, the Bren gun's barrel, um, I'm sure I could look it up and find out exactly why, but the, the end of the barrel of a Bren gun was a very light silver in compared to the rest of the gun. But you might want to pick out little details like the canteen and then the entrenching tool, that kind of thing. And if there's a, there happens to be a guy running around with a bayonet handle or maybe a grenade or something, it might be worth your time picking up the colors there. Because there's a lot of details on these models. These models are really nice. They're really well detailed and it's worth, uh, worth your time picking it out so you can see it. All right. Well, I think we can obviously see why it took you so many uh, months to get these guys done. How many models again in the box? 142, did I say? 140, yeah, 142 guys. Gosh, with three, and each guy got uh, three shades, right, plus right. The, the three camo colors, right. plus the two colors on the barrel, and the uh, yellow on the stock. My God. Well, James, thanks a lot, man. That's that's great. I think uh, that should give people a lot of good information as far as not only uh, how to paint these guys, but just any army that you're looking forward to uh, to getting into. You know how to go about researching and finding uh, the right uh, the right uh, colors, and then uh, marrying that to uh, whatever paint line you're using. Uh, thanks a lot for the great information. Thanks a lot for watching. And uh, as always, you can email us at thehobbypodcast at yahoo.com with any comments or concerns or feel free to find us on the uh, flames of war post and uh you know let's uh you know, get a thread going in the older nest uh talking about the show and what we're doing here uh thanks again and uh take care go on